This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and today I'm going to show you how to build Kiwi from Cyberpunk 2077 Edge Runners. Let's get to it. In Edge Runners, Kiwi is a net runner, and we never really see her do anything in the series other than net running things, with one exception that I won't mention because spoilers. So because of that, I wanted to try to make a pure net runner build, and I wanted this net runner build to play and feel different than my previous net runner build. And if you want to check that one out, I will put a link for it down in the description. So because Kiwi is a really good net runner and we only ever see her do net runny things, one would assume that if she was going to go on a mission, no one would even know she was there and the mission would get completed and everybody would probably either be dead or incapacitated. Let's talk about how this build plays. This build is centered around stealth gameplay, but you don't really have to try to be stealthy. Every part of this build is designed to make you invisible to the enemy and extremely hard to detect. Kiwi walks into an area, breaches, uploads demons that hijack eyesight, and when she uploads quick hacks, she disrupts communication between everybody in the area. So even if you do happen to be seen, they can't communicate it with any of their allies. Kiwi's main attacks are system reset, which just immediately shuts down any target in a non-lethal manner, and contagion, which poisons targets, causing them to violently throw up and keeps them from being able to attack or detect or literally do pretty much anything. Contagion spreads in a huge area and can also spread back and forth between multiple targets, dealing massive amounts of damage. Let's take a look at the stats. So we have 20 in intelligence, 20 in cool, 14 in body, and 14 in reflexes. Now I know what you're thinking. You're like, why would we put 14 in body and 14 in reflexes? All we really need is 20 into intelligence and 20 into cool. And that is correct. The reason we have 14 in body and 14 in reflexes Flexes is so we can equip specific cyberware and the points in body also help our survivability if we do for some crazy random reason manage to get seen and or shot. Let's take a look at perk points in intelligence, starting with quick hacks. So you're pretty much going to fill out everything in quick hacks here. If you end up in a situation where you for some reason need additional perk points, you can respec your perk points and drop all of the crafting perks in the quick hack tree once you have created all of the necessary quick hacks that I'm going to show you here in a minute. The only two that we are not going to fill out in this tree are the I spy because we don't care about an enemy netrunner that's hacking us, they're going to die, so it doesn't really matter. We don't need to see where they're at, and we don't really need to reduce the cost of hacking devices because we're not going to be doing that very often. You only run into turrets and stuff every once in a while, and shutting down cameras is already extremely cheap. On top of that, your RAM refills extremely fast, so hacking devices isn't really that big of a deal. In Breach Protocol, we are a lot more selective. There isn't a lot that we really need here, so we have Mass Vulnerability Demon that way we can initiate mass vulnerability. That just makes contagion more effective if we pull this one off. Total recall and totaler recall along with head start are extremely handy because they work together in synergy. Head start always uploads your ice pick right from the get go because it is always the first one in the list. And then the two recalls immediately reduce the cost of all quick hacks by one. So totaling up to two right from the get go. Then we have compression, which just makes it easier to do the puzzle for the little mini game. And we have Hackathon, which if we upload all three demons in the Breach Protocol, shortens quick hack cooldowns by 33% for five minutes. This is absolutely insane. And everything else in this tree is just kind of meh. Everything I have selected here is specifically selected to work in tandem with everything else we have going on. So it either makes quick hacks cheaper, reduces their cooldowns, and or makes our targets more vulnerable. Moving on to cool in ninjutsu, the perks chosen here are perks that either improve our poison damage or have an effect on the target if it is poisoned, along with increasing our crit chance, increasing our detection time, and the big one here is one that increases our survivability, and that is cheat death. It states when your health drops below 50%, reduce all incoming damage by 50% for 10 seconds. Everything here in cold-blooded is the stuff that improves cold-blooded with the 
exception of Frosty Synapsis, which reduces our cooldowns by 6% per stack of Cold Blooded, as well as Quick Transfer, which reduces Quick Hack upload time by 3% per stack of Cold Blooded. And a really important one here is Blood Swell, which states upon receiving lethal damage while Cold Blooded is active, prevents death, consumes all stacks of Cold Blooded, restoring 10% health per stack, and grants damage immunity for 5 seconds. Player cannot gain Cold Blooded while Perk is active, and it has a cooldown of 15 seconds. This makes us extremely hard to kill. Moving on to Body. So everything we have here in Body is just stuff to improve our character overall as far as health, health regen. We have like a Butterfly, which allows us to dodge without draining any stamina. We have Marathoner, which allows us to sprint without draining any stamina. So all of these are just really nice quality of life perks that also help our overall survivability. And we haven't spent a single point in reflexes because there isn't anything in there that does us any good at all. It is specifically so we can equip cyberware. Speaking of cyberware, let's take a look at what we have equipped. So for our frontal cortex, we have the legendary Exodus. We have the legendary visual cortex support. And we have the legendary limbic system enhancement. In circulatory system, we're running the rare bio monitor, which instantly restores 50% of our health if our health drops below 15%. We have the rare bio conductors, reducing all cyberware cooldowns by 10%. And we have the bioplastic blood vessels, epic version, increasing our health regen outside of combat by 10 points per second. In the immune system, we have the cata resist, which increases all of our resistance by 35%. And we have the pain editor, which reduces all incoming damage by 10%. Now for the whole reason we have points in two reflexes we have the reflex tuner and we have the synaptic accelerator so the synaptic accelerator slows time by 30 percent when we are detected by an enemy there's a 60 second cooldown but we will very seldom get detected by an enemy but if we are this gives us plenty of time to react to it the reflex tuner slows time by 70 percent for three seconds when our health drops below 25 percent and it has a 50 second cooldown if for some reason we do get hit this gives us plenty of time to react act if we get hit and hit hard. Moving on to the subdermal stuff, we have subdermal armor, legendary version, giving us 300 armor. Then of course we have optical camo. This is for in situations where we're not sure where the enemy's at and we need to run around like crazy and we might run up on somebody. We can just optical camo so we don't get seen. And then I didn't know what to fill the last one with, so I just stuck heat converter in there. Put whatever you want in the last one. It doesn't really matter. For skeleton, hands, arms, legs, run whatever you want to run in all of that stuff. I'm running titanium bones with which increases our carry capacity by 60% and the synaptic signal optimizer, which increases our health by an additional 30%. You don't even have to buy anything for your arms. The only reason I have the mono wire equipped here is because I already had an arms cyberware on this character and you can't unequip cyberware. So we have the mono wire. I just stuck it in there because it's the least visible thing that you can put on your arms. You're never going to need to attack with anything other than quick hacks, so it doesn't really matter. Let's talk about the cyber deck. So the cyber deck you want is the Tetratronic Rippler MK4, and that is because it allows ultimate quick hacks to spread once. It reduces the RAM cost of ultimate quick hacks by three. It reduces quick hack upload time by a freaking 75%, which is insane. Quick hacks upload so fast with this thing, it is absolutely crazy. And then it reduces all quick hack cooldowns by 45%. Let's take a look at the quick hacks we are using and talk about them and how they work together. The quick hacks I have chosen for this build are Detonate Grenade, Contagion, Reboot Optics, Sonic Shock, System Reset, and Memory Wipe. Your main attacks in this setup are going to be Contagion and System Reset. You can also weave a little bit of Detonate Grenade in there as well for funsies. Everything else chosen here is to help support those two abilities and help keep us invisible. So if we take a look at Reboot Optics, it gives us the ability to upload the Optics Jammer Demon, which when we upload that, if we get seen, it just makes them go blind so that they can't see us. On top of that, there's another one here that's overlooked quite a lot and is actually really, really handy, and that is Sonic Shock. I've overlooked this one in the past as well. But if we take a look at its passive ability, it states enemies under the effect of any 
quick hack are cut off from the local network, preventing them from communicating with their allies. This means that if somebody sees you or when you attack somebody, if they are alerted, they can't alert everybody else in the area, provided they are under the effects of one of your quick hacks, which they're most definitely going to be. Then Memory Wipe helps just support this even more, and it's extremely handy for little tight groups where you don't have the option to breach them. If you don't have breach protocol, you can hit them with Contagion, then immediately hit them with Memory Wipe, and they'll just sit there getting hit by Contagion in a daze and have no idea what to do while they quickly die. Now, there are a few customizations you can make here if you want to. Detonate Grenade is not a must, neither is Memory Wipe. They're just, well, one, Detonate Grenade is fun and Memory Wipe is extremely handy. You can actually swap the two of those out for Synapsis Burnout and Suicide. These two work in tandem really well together. The passive ability on Synapsis Burnout is defeating an enemy with any quick hack causes nearby enemies to panic. The passive ability on Suicide is causing an enemy to panic reduces the RAM cost of your next ultimate quick hack, which just constantly makes system reset super cheap to cast. The passive ability on the rest of these, especially system reset, is super handy because it says defeating an enemy reduces the RAM cost of your next quick hack by one, and it stacks up to six times. Contagion just helps different attacks that can jump, jump more. However, it doesn't affect our ultimate quick hacks because the only reason they can jump is because of our cyber deck, so they don't get the benefit from Contagion, which is kind of sad. They really should, but unfortunately they do not. Let's cover our outfit. So for our outfit, we are wearing the makeshift Maelstrom gas mask for our face. We have nothing on our head. We are using the, I don't even know how to pronounce that. You can see it on the screen. Rocker coat, the red alert anti-surge net runner suit, red version. We do not have any pants on and we are wearing the reinforced rogue absurd exo jacks with defense nanotubing red boots you can get the mask from this clothing vendor here at this location you can get the netrunner suit from this vendor here at this location and you can get the boots from this vendor here at this location the jacket i couldn't find anywhere legit in the game i had to install a mod in order to get the jacket so good luck with that i really hate the clothing system and finding the right clothes in this game they've made it an absolute pain in the butt because you go to the different vendors and you just got to keep skipping time and hope that you roll it you may never roll it who knows because it's random it's a pain in the butt so yeah that's the jacket if you want it um i'm not sure where to get it as for the armor just pick the armor that you like i'm wearing just a smattering of stuff here i've picked obviously net runner stuff so my headpiece says that quick hack upload time reduction is plus 8.50 percent that's some strange wording not 100% whether that's a defensive thing and reduces the upload time when an enemy is trying to upload to me or if that's my quick hack time or what and then the netrunner suit that I'm wearing has mitigation strength on it and quick hack damage reduction and I'm pretty sure that is definitely a defensive thing so the amount of damage a quick hack on me does and then I've just went with heavy armor and boots of speed because speed is nice and crit damage which apparently doesn't even maybe work um yeah so pick whatever armor you want to wear from what i've been able to tell it doesn't quite matter as much as you think it does let's cover leveling this build because leveling this build is going to be a little bit different than how i tell you to normally level builds because normally i always choose the tech ability and leveling with the tech ability is super easy so to start off you want to start with six points in intelligence six points into cool and then five points into reflexes so because leveling a pure net runner is relatively difficult because you really don't start to see a lot of damage coming from net running abilities until you can get a really good cyber deck and get your quick hacks upgraded i highly recommend putting your first two levels into reflexes this will bring you up to seven in reflexes which will allow you to get 
things like bullseye, increasing rifle and submachine gun damage by 10%, as well as executioner and points into bullet jock and eagle eye. These things are just going to allow you to use rifles and do a decent amount of damage. You can choose either the submachine guns or the sniper rifles. I personally would level with sniper rifles as they are relatively easy to use and extremely strong, but pick whichever one you are more comfortable with and use those and then start putting all of your points into intelligence until you have around 15 or so levels into intelligence. At that point, you should be able to do decent damage with your quick hacks and you should be able to afford a pretty good cyber deck. Then you can start dumping points into cool and then finish out intelligence as well. And then very last, put your points into body and finish out reflexes. As those two aren't nearly as important as cool and intelligence, so you want to get cool and intelligence to 20 as quickly as possible. Once you have intelligence and cool maxed out, you should be able to drop weapons altogether and just be using your quick hacks at that point. And I think that pretty much covers everything. If you have any questions, let me know down there in the comments. And of course, as always, if you found this video helpful or informational, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.